Welcome to the 10 Minute Treasure. My name is Jeff Pospisil and I'm going to go over in this video how to set up a budget in QuickBooks Online. So it's pretty easy. There's a couple ways to do it. There's a manual way and then there's a way that uses Excel. And no surprise, I like the way that uses Excel because it just, for me, it's just easier. So without any more uh, wasting time, let's go get to it. So here I am on my dashboard in QuickBooks. And by the way, I'm just gonna, uh, if yours doesn't look like mine, I usually use this accountant view and this is where you switch. So it's that little gear right over here. And then this will say accountant view, switch to accountant view if you're in business view, that might be part of the difference. Uh, one of the things too, is since we're talking about budgeting, what I wanna start using is this cash flow uh, the, and the planner as well. And I'm going to make a video eventually on those. But right now we are going to talk about budgeting. So how do you get to budget? So if you're in a similar view as mine, oops, mine is waiting. I have budget right here, or you could find it under this gear. So under the gear tools, budgeting, I think it'll get you to the same place. So I'm just going to click on budgeting. So now that we're here, you can, by the way, watch this video. It's probably good. I'm kind of stubborn. I like to look at things in my own way. Uh, there's two ways to make a budget that I'm aware of. There's the one way that's all the way online. And then there's the way of to use Excel. And I am going to show you both ways real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and hit create budget. And there's two budget types. And this has me really curious. Because normally I'm used to this kind of budget, which is over the income and expenses. But this one, you could actually budget based on balance sheet and yeah, your balance sheet. So the assets, liabilities, and cash flow. So if I had certain targets for my cash, or maybe I was trying to pay down my debt, I wonder what that would look like. I'm going to experiment with that one day, but today is not the day choose the period so we are a calendar year fiscal year and i want to do it for 2024 and do you want a consolidated budget or do you want to create individual budgets based on location class or customer um, and really i don't have classes set up if i did that would be slick but i don't so anyway Let's go ahead and go to next. And here, one of the things that I really like is there's this toggle switch, compare reference data. And if you click that, it'll toggle off the prior year amounts. So here's my 2023 actual amounts. And if I hit it, it hides those. And again, they're gonna want you to take the tour. Um, they are, you can also choose what you want to use for reference data. Um, enable, uh, let's see yearly. If I just wanted to put in the total amounts, that would be fine. So let's just say I wanted for individuals, $4,000. Um, I can put that in there. What does that look like quarterly? It's actually going to split that up. And even monthly, it's going to split that up automatically, by the way. So whenever you put in this annual column, which is this one right here, um, it'll split up into 12 different ones. So let's just say for connectional funding, I wanted to throw in $50,000. That'd be split up automatically. But if I knew, for example, that here's my one of my committees. What if I knew my committee meets... Um, twice a year, once in April, I can just go ahead and plug that amount right in here. And I'm going to hide this comparative data because by the way, the comparative data would help you know where to put that expense too. So you can see the seasonal, um, aspect of it. And let's put in, maybe they also meet in, in, uh, September and that total is automatically uploaded. So that is pretty slick. And let me think about this. So you could do this. You can go ahead and go through all these and punch them in like this. 
and it wouldn't be horrible, but it wouldn't be great either. So what I want to show you next, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, what does this do? Hide empty rows. So by the way, you could hide empty rows, uh, which might be helpful, especially if you have like non-budgeted items. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cancel this. I'm not going to save it. Do you want to leave without saving? And I'm going to say, yes, I do want to leave without saving. So the way that I think is going to be even more helpful, at least for most of us, normally I do my budget in Excel already. Um, that, that's where we kind of play around with the math and it's easy to update. I don't have to go in and run a special report or anything. I can see everything right there. So normally what I do is I go to import budget. You don't have the option for the cash, uh, the balance sheet budget here. You do get to select your period. You can select if it's subdivided or not. If you've already got your budget onto our template, I don't have the template. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And here's where you can go ahead and download that template. And so I went ahead and I downloaded it. And I'm going to open it. All right. So here it did, it does give you some instructions. So it's going to tell you how to use this template. It says, do not change the names, do not change the rows, uh, leave it in everything. It says, don't mess with it is basically what it's saying. Um, yeah, just don't mess with anything. And then there's this second sheet. So that was the guideline sheet. And then there's the consolidated sheet. And so then what I would do is I would go ahead and enter in all my monthly amounts that I want to put in. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and that then we'll get to the importing part. All right, I went ahead and completed this sheet. Um, what I did basically was I put the total amounts here for the annual amount and then I just did uh, divide by 12. Um, and then I, oh, one of the things you can see here is I have the, the, you can see my formula here. It's a little small, but I divided by 12 and I rounded to the nearest dollar. And if you do that, one of the things you're going to have to do is copy. So control C, paste values. And that'll get rid of those formulas because I can't have this column in here. Remember, one of their guidelines is don't add, don't delete columns or rows. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And now this should be good to go to, uh, to upload. And I have it named PL budget sample one. That was the default one. And let me go ahead and upload my budget. So I click, oops, what I did is I clicked here and then it was right in my download folder. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that. Okay, it already has it. So either you click the button or you click here and it'll ask you where it's at. So I'm going to hit next. And it's importing my budget. How was your experience? Um, it was pretty easy. I'm just going to share my feedback. I think they did a good job. And I'm going to view my budget now. I'm going to get rid of the reference data. But now I could go in here. You could see everything that was in my Excel has been brought over to here. So everything's there. Everything looks good. Um, it'll tell me the total amount for expenses which actually agrees with my what was approved for my budget. It'll show me the total amount for income right up here, which is in agreement with also with my budget. And now if I wanted to change things, so for example, I have one for insurance. I know what days I pay my insurance. So if I wanted to expense my insurance on the date I'm paying it, I could go ahead and um, enter that. Other than that, I think this is good to go. And I can just go ahead and hit save and close. 
One of the things you could do too, by the way, is you could also make a copy of a budget. And a copy of a budget would, might be helpful, especially if you want to look at maybe projections. So that's where I would say the, the most thing. So let's just say you're about a halfway through the year and your budget that was approved, maybe it doesn't look anything like what you were expecting. So that is something you could also do is you could uh, make a copy of a budget and go ahead and do it that way. All right, so that is it. We have done it. Um, by the way, you can also make upload multiple versions. So if you wanted to, you can go ahead and save that uh, version that you just did. And I already have it saved. I could rename it, by the way. So this is my uh, official budget but I can go ahead and make a copy of a budget. So let's just say I wanted to um, import another budget, but this one's maybe more my projections. I'm gonna go ahead and do next. I'm gonna go ahead and upload my same actual budget. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. Keep both. So now it gave me a second one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this one. So maybe this is my 2024 uh, projections. So I might use that one if I'm going through the year and all of a sudden I see, um, well, just as you get more information, we can go ahead and look and say, here's how we project we're going to finish. Because you don't want to overspend. You don't want to... Um, yeah, if you can spend more, that maybe you're bringing in more money. Maybe you want to adjust your what you're going to spend. So anyway, I think that's an interesting way to do things. Um, maybe that cash flow planning will actually replace this. I'll have to find out later. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. I'm going to close it. And there you can see that there. I might want to rename this one to 2024 budget. and save that and close it. And so now I have actually two budgets and when I run a report, I could choose which budget I want based on do I want the actual budget or do I wanna run it for projections? All right, hopefully that was helpful. I will put some links in the description. One of the links I'm gonna put out there is to my blog, jctaccounting.com. That's over on the side, that side, that side I think, anyway. You can go ahead and go there and you can subscribe and then you'll always be notified whenever I put out a new episode, you get an email. So, and I don't put out more than, rarely more than one email per week and it's just to announce the new video or the new post. So if you wanna do that, that'd be awesome. Otherwise, like, subscribe, share. All right, God bless you till next time.